Hello, welcome to another video by Mox Marine. In this video, I'm about to finish um, tearing down a 4.3 liter V6. Um, this is actually a truck engine that was placed into a boat, but uh, that's beside the point. It's still a 4.3 V6. And uh, we've just now got the oil pan off. The oil pump's still attached. We haven't done that, but... Uh, so I just did a quick inspection and found out already what the problem with this motor is. So if you check, if you grab your rods and move them back and forth, you can barely see that. Well, you can see it pretty good. If you can feel any play like that at all, the rod bearing is gone. So that's a god that's rod bearing that's bad right there. If I can have if I can move it and feel any play with my fingers at all, it's a bad rod bearing. You cannot feel a two or two thousandths of an inch clearance or one thousand inch clearance, but I can definitely feel this. So that's number one cylinder. I believe it's number one. Oh uh, yeah. So that's number one and it's gone. Number two feels okay. Now, usually on a V8. When one, like if two of them side by side go out, it'll take out the other one because they share on the same journal. But in this case, these journals are split. Uh, they're split 30 degrees. So they have their own independent journal and they don't necessarily take them out at the same time. So I'm inspecting number three. I feel a side to side, but not side. I feel play this way, but not that way. So that's okay. No play there. No play there. No play there. So this number one rod bearing is uh, gone. And so when I get it apart, I, actually I'll take that one apart first and show you what it looks like. But this is what they classically call rod knot. When you uh, have an engine with, with a rod like this, as the piston rides up and down, it creates a knocking sound. And it's a rapid, not, 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 not like that. So that's, uh, that's what caused it right there. This is not that far gone. Probably was a, not as bad a rod knock as normal, but I've seen a lot worse. But this is a sign that the uh, it, rod's about to go. Um, and again, uh, if you've watched enough of my videos, uh, this is typically caused by low octane gas. So the, uh, when the engine's running at a high RPM, it starts to have detonation. The detonation creates severe down forces or almost like a hammering effect. And these rods get hammered, these bearings in here get hammered, and they uh, get, start to get looser and looser and you end up with a, a spun rod bearing. But uh, this is ultimately caused by using basically 87 octane gas. Remember, my cruiser requires at least 89 octane. I appreciate all the business, but uh, I'd rather people keep their boats intact and have to bring them to me. So, um, since we get this out apart, I'll show you what the what the bearing looks like for a mild rod mild rod knot condition. All right, we now have the uh, number one piston taken out of this uh, out of the bore, and uh, it left the uh, crankshaft journal visible. And you see, there's quite a bit of scoring here. I I, I can take my thumb and feel like mountain ridges in that journal right there. Um, not supposed to feel that with your fingernail at all. Um, so you, as you can see, it, uh, it swore down this crankshaft pretty good. Um, I'll have to take a caliper to it and see how much metal is left, but uh, a lot of times it ruins the crankshaft when it gets to like this. Because at this point, you've got metal on metal. Uh, so this is the rod. You see how it scored up the rod right there? So what's happened is the bearing went, and then this surface and that crankshaft serves a ride on each other. And uh, it's just metal on metal contact. And even though there's, you have some splash, splash lubrication, um, lawnmowers, that's how lawnmowers use splash lubrication, but if you got that much of a gap, you can't form what's called an oil wedge. Uh, it's called an oil wedge. It's a very thin film of oil that creates kind of like a uh, separation between the two surfaces of metal. And uh, so that's what uh, protects it from destroying itself. But once the tolerance or clearance gets too high that wedge breaks down you no longer have a wedge you have just metal and metal hidden and so that's what this is um, the bearings themselves how the tow goes to the bearings get hammered so here's the bearings that's the bearing that came out of it you see it's been flattened the sides of the bearing have this bearings have been flattened so the sides of it work the way up between the rod and the and the uh, crankshaft that's what that little wing is or that's just metal that's been hammered and flattened and the excess from the heat and that is pushed, it's almost like it's deformed its bearing and, and squ squeezed it out beside the, the uh, rod and the uh, journal. So let's see here. Here it is again. You see how it's, that's a, this is a rod, this, works, this is a bearing that's uh, gone, destroyed. And uh, is eventually this will just go all the way. This, this will just disappear and you have metal and metal. Eventually you keep running it like this and this rod will actually, from the heat, will break. And then it'll, the, from the forces going around in circles, once it breaks, it'll sling it through the side of the uh, block here. I mean, it actually 
it lets it take a chunk out of this cast iron right here and sling it out. Or it can sling, you typically will sling it out through the side of the oil pan because it's much lighter and softer. But um, this one may not have been so bad <clears throat> that it uh, would have done that. It, uh, it's probably still running at the time, but it's probably making noise, a, a good knocking noise. So that's what the uh, common rod nut looks like, uh, what the results of rod nut look like. And if you keep running your engine with that knock, eventually this is, this is what happens and then it'll get worse and worse until it finally breaks and slings to the side of your oil pan. All right, so as I'm going through this engine um, and uh, pulling out these uh, rods and pistons, um, as I was explaining in the previous segment, the number one uh, rod bearing was gone. And I was wondering, well, why, aren't, why is it just one that's gone, the rest of them aren't gone? And uh, so I got the answer, so that that's not the case. So that's number six. Um, you see how metal is starting to uh, peel off the bearing. There's pits and uh, I'm trying to see if I can. The bearing is starting to. There's metal starting to come off, and what it does is it kind of comes off and then it remelts itself. Back on the, remelts itself back on the bearing. So um, that was number six. This is the other half of number six here. So number one's gone out. Six was starting to go, and this was number I think it's either three or four. Um, I can't find the other half of the road, but you can see there was something going on with this. It was starting to score. So this bearing went too far behind. So that's uh, three out of the six bearings on this engine were uh, susceptible to, well, one of them already gone. Six is about to go, and so the number three or four. So um, I guess the weakest one goes first and followed by the rest of them. But it um, doesn't matter. Once, once one gone, the whole engine's toast. It's got to be rebuilt. I just wanted to show you the rest of these bearings and show you, explain to you that um, it, it's not just one at a time. They all go pretty soon thereafter. Also, as part of this teardown video, I want to show you a tool that I use to get uh, the engine apart. So this is a, a, a I would you call it, it's a quarter drive socket. It accepts both a 5 sixteenths end and a, a quarter end on that end. And it's a ratcheting uh, drive. And um, I've got a um, 3 8 socket, and what I'm doing, I'm getting these bolts here out. There's one right there, and there's th four of them. One of them is 7 16 the other 3 8 I normally try to take this off. This, uh, I try, normally try to take these bolts out before I uh, put the engine on the stand, but in this case, uh, we forgot to, so I'm having to do it now. So you almost can't do this without this special tool here to get, to get down in there. So um, I wish I could do a video showing all the tools I use, but I want to have to do it in, as I think of it one at a time. Also, I may have covered this before, but you want to make sure your main caps are numbered. This is number one, number two, and number three, and then obviously a number, this is a 4.3 V6, only has four, number four is unique, so you don't have to remember that one, but um, you've got to get these back on in the right place. These were, these, this hole was machined uh, with this cap in place. So the cap and the location are matched. So you do not want to get those mixed up. Um, I have mixed them up before. And in that case, you have to put them on, torque them down, and then look at the machine pattern, look at the way the uh, interior board is machined to try to match up the score marks or uh, machine marks to figure out which one went where. Um, so again, it's very critical that you number these. If there's no number already ready, there's no number there now. Go ahead and do it yourself. Just take a t uh, some kind of device and a punch and uh, put one dot here, two dots there. You don't have to number. You don't have to do that one because this on left and that's unique. So you can do one dot, two dots, and no dots. That's how I do it. So um, we'll just want to show you new to uh, number these caps. Oh, and when you take your block to the machine shop, you want to include these caps attached to the block with the bolts so that when they uh, put it on the machine for boring, that's how they line up the machine. That's how they line up the block in the machine is these things have to be torqued down and then that's what helps to uh, keep the block on the machine is, uh, parallel to their uh, their boring machine. So just thought you want, just thought you want to know that and uh, just trying to give some, a few tips as I go. You may have already done it, but um, a lot of people I know are not look, can't look at every one of my videos, so I try to cover as much as I can in each video. All right, this video is getting better and better, or in YouTube land, longer and longer. Um, so these are your main bearings, and this is uh, rare that I see this, but uh, the numbers one, two, three, and four main bearings are starting to go out. So this is number two. You see how it's starting to squeeze out the side. That's the number two main bearing that was in the uh, cap 
side. That's the one that takes most of the the uh, uh, the abuse. This is number three. You see, it's bad too. The uh, like I said, the bearing material is starting to squirt out the side, and uh, that bearing is gone. Um, these bearings had not spun, but they would have spun any any day. So, and there's number four. It's not as bad, but um, all these main bearings are, are uh, no good. I can take my fingernail and feel rigid. That's number one. It's probably the best of the four, but I can definitely feel, I can feel ridges in there. And I can also feel right here on the edge where the bearing wasn't riding right here on this outer edge. So I can feel like a raised part right there. So this bearing was going. There's number two, definitely feel not quite as bad, but I can feel ridges in there. Number three, again, not as bad. And then number four, number four is not as bad. Let's see, number four is not as bad, but um, so yeah, it looks like number one is probably worse, but the bearings seem to be okay. I think, let me see, let me look at number one look closer. So with number one, uh, I don't know where number one is. I must have thrown it away thinking it was okay, but uh, number one's gone too. So it's rare for me to see uh, all four main bearings go out like this at one time, but um, on this engine, that's apparently what happened. So I'm fixed to lift the crankshaft out and this tear down will be complete. And uh, I'm gonna throw away, throw away these bearings. Um, I'm gonna measure the crankshaft with the caliper. It may be trash. It may not be able to be saved with the machine. I know on the rods, I can go as, uh, as much as 40 thousandths undersize. And on the mains, possibly 30 thousandths undersize. But um, yeah, this crank uh, could be toast. So um, as I was saying in the previous segment, I, I've already loosened this and pulled it. I can't get it out because it's stuck in there between my engine Well, maybe I can. Nope. So it's stuck in between the crankshaft and my engine stand. But as soon as I lift, I'll lift this out with the crank and then it'll come off. So this tearing out is complete. Um, one thing left is take that piece out. Um, what else? Oh, oh, and the camshaft. I've, I've still got the camshaft and the balance shaft in this block. Oh, I believe the lifter is still in too. That's why I've, I got it flipped upside down so the, the camshaft will come out um, with the lifters. Uh, with the push rods gone, the lifters will just fall to the top of their board because it's upside down. And then the camshaft should slide right out without any problem. And then uh, once I get that done, I'll take the lifters out from the top and also I'll get the balance shaft. So this tear down is complete. Um, one thing I want to point out, this thing's got a timing chain tensioner, which I haven't seen before. Must be a feature on some of the newer, newer models. Um, but anyway, I'm going to probably won't be reusing that. I don't see how I can if the, um, I don't, the timing chain, if you notice how small these sprocket teeth are, um, the chain I use is much bigger than that. So I don't think this would work with that, but I'll find out. So it completes this tear down. Um, hope you enjoyed the video and learned something from it. And uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, appreciate the, the subscribers. I just hit the 2000, the 2K subscriber mark and it's keeping on climbing. And I appreciate the, uh, Appreciate the uh, subscribers. I've got a, a surprise coming out uh, next couple of videos, and uh, I appreciate y'all's support. Thanks for watching.